Well, welcome back, everyone, to episode 81 of the Three Dudes podcast. To my left, I have my two visually impaired friends for those watching, both wearing Stevie Wonder sunglasses, and I'm wearing regular vision, have to wear to cease regular glasses. Good to have you guys back on the show. It's been a week <laughs> since we did this. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Me, for having us. As from one blind mice to the other blind mice to our... To the third blind mouse. Yeah. To our third, uh, our seeing mouse, <laughs> seeing eye mouse. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. I did get one comment. Uh, well, we got a couple comments to roll through, but one that I want to say at the top of the show, uh, I've got a comment. Actually, I want to. I wonder who it was from. I want to say it was from Alex Shaneborn, either Alex or Taryn. The redheads kind of combined on that one and said, if I hear you guys start the podcast one more time with good morning. And then I can't remember what he was going to what he said he was going to do. But uh, here it is. Benny, every pod you start with good morning, I expect a cash app. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that is Broden's dumbass every single time. And I say, true. good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever yeah. you're watching this. Yeah. You start every podcast with good morning. I'm not against it. I like it. Uh, well, you Alex, tell those gingers to keep their hands out of the cookie jar. Tell them right now. <laughs> you gingers keep your hands out of the cookie jar. <laughs> there we there go. It is. it is on the record. Don't beat me up. Um, but yeah, good to, uh, good to be back on the podcast. Let's get into the comments. <laughs> Unless you guys have anything pertinent you would like to share. No, not really. I mean, weather's nice, so I'm in a good mood, I guess. Weather's yeah, good. It's good. Weather is nice. It's getting nice outside. Um, staying on top of my ice chunks. Usually there's a nice little death trap by my door, and I'm staying on top of it. Shoveled it's claimed it right so you many victims. Here. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be great for keeping burglars out. <laughs> the amount of burglars that don't come here would surprise you. No it would burglar. Baffle you. <laughs> yeah. well, you can imagine that they get to your house and they just... Be shooed away from that yeah. ice chunk. <laughs> you try to burgle there's this joint and see what happens. There's yeah. not a chance. It's like, and then there's that trap door. You know how they have to sleep in when the bucket of water fills up so full? It tips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's like, oh, you stay put right there. <laughs> you just wait. And then it just sopping wet. Foiled. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little death trap. Um, let's get into some comments. Uh, first comment we got is from Brett, Bretty, Bretty. Five days ago. Uh, hi, guys. Love your videos and chill atmosphere. Thanks, dude. Positive comment. Yeah. Holy <laughs> crap. This feels, feels good. good. <laughs> wow. God damn. Uh, quick question. Which mic arms are you using? The, Honestly, are, I'm not uh, sure. These are these the, are the John Deere 370Z Xs, baby. They're Podcast Pros. By Acolyte. Yep. Podcast Pro wrong. by Acolyte. So glad we could share some information. They'll never see this clip. I guarantee they've already forgot about that question. Probably don't watch the pod, but if you do, Brady, that's what we use. And honestly, don't buy them. They kind of suck. Yeah. I'd recommend you don't. They're probably good for a week. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> that, now you can see the... Uh, yeah. They're probably good for a week. These are, and then they do some wobble action. Yeah, for yeah, sure. You would not... <laughs> we could tighten them up. Yeah. If Let someone us, if someone had a severed arm, you would <laughs> you'd sh yeah. recommend they don't put this back on. <laughs> But yeah, we'll tighten them up and then maybe give you a, an, an update next week. Things we won't do for 500, Alex, please. <laughs> um, all right. Moving on to comment number two. Daniel Kilpatrick, 4873. Uh, Going to keep joining raffles until I get one is so chaotically wholesome. Yeah. That was honestly, you talking about joining gun raffles, never yeah. buying a gun, but just being in raffles. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm gonna live by that. Yeah. I think it's a thrill. It's so cool how American that is. I want to win something. It's not the same as buying it. You know? Like a gun. Yeah. Not only do you get to get the rush of gambling, but at the end, you get a firearm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, two birds stoned at once, they yeah. say. For $20, you could have a lethal mechanism. I think the problem with me not, like the reason I don't want to buy a firearm, I like that word to use, so I'm going to use it again. The reason I don't want to buy one is because I would buy it and then I'd never use it. Fair. You know, it's, it it's sit in a drawer until someone tries to burgle me, which we've already went over. That's not an issue over here. Better yeah, to not, have not it with the ice and deterrent. not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah. I mean, mine, I mine sits in my drawer all the time unless Same. I get a wild hair and some of my buddies want to go out shooting, yeah. which if you are a firearm owner, you should obviously do from time to time to make sure especially right away when you get one familiar side familiarize yourself with this firearm yeah how it works 
what to How do it doesn't if it work. doesn't work. Yeah. Because there's times it, it could jam. You got to clean it. Stuff like that. Surprised at the number of times guns jam. It's much less often than you'd think. Usually, there, usually if it jams, there's a reason why. Too much jam in it? Yeah. You How probably, much jam would you have to put into a gun for it to actually jam? Not Tons. a lot. Uh, it depends. What kind of what kind of jam are we talking? Concord about? grape. Oh, not a lot. That shit's sticky. Uh, I just don't. There's a lot of sticky. But if we're talking more of like a marmalade, an orange marmalade, <laughs> God. that's more lubricative. Yeah, because eventually, at some point, it's got to lube up the gun instead of jam it. You there know? has to be, yeah, because of the viscosity. There's I mean, and then you're, you're heating it up, but you then you wonder if uh, it was getting so hot that the sugar inside the jam is like caramelizing. caramelizing. And yeah. so like it creates such a, a much harder substance to make it. I can almost guarantee there's a YouTube video somewhere because someone would have done that because there's tons of videos where guys like test guns and they, they jam in them. They everything like they take them and they tie them onto a string and then they drag them behind a four wheeler. Let's say, let's see if it shoots after this. Hmm. Or they, they run them through mud just to see because that's the whole like that's the whole deal with the AK-47 is that it's like the one of the most reliable. You can jam guns. it up. You, it doesn't you jam. You can lube it up with jam. You, you can lube it up with anything. Yeah, dude. and it'll just keep working. There's videos of people shooting it while the thing's burning itself because it's been shooting for so long. Really? Like the gun is on fire and it's still shooting. It's called a heat check. <laughs> <laughs> it's killed enough people. It's like, What's oh, that NBA jam? Yeah. He's on fire or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's on fire. <laughs> My favorite line from that video game was, from his grandma's house. <laughs> shoot from the past half court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That game was fun. It was. I do remember that game. Well, yeah, that's a cool experiment we can do. Maybe that'll be our second. The first one was our Ooblek when we were hammer fisting from the gods into a bowl <laughs> of what we thought was liquid. Was so awesome. That is an awesome video of Liam for sure. <laughs> Just- that was the one of the most fun times I've ever had <laughs> is just beating the absolute hell out of a yeah. bowl of Stuff. non-Newtonian fluid. Yeah, which is, glad I know that now. CP Monty 88 uh, asked, is this your guys' job? <laughs> Crazy. I wish we could say yes. <laughs> yeah, I really We're wish. We're trying. Not Keep yet. commenting. Not yeah. yet. It might take five, six years. Uh, we just got to 514 subscribers on YouTube, I think. Yeah, 500 of you. Which is nothing to scoff at. Um, you know, we're not in the millions, but 500. If you think about 500 people in a room. It's look, a lot of people. Looking at us, talk about jamming a gun with jelly. Yeah. That's something. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty uh, cool. Alex Shimke, shame on Easton for the Dodgers jersey. Had to wear it. Uh, my buddy works for the Dodgers, so I was supporting. Um. And yeah, that's just, you know, Walker Bueller. He's a good guy. I like I'd it. wear his jersey. Yeah. A nice, honest American <laughs> citizen. Yeah. In LA. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not a lot of the never mind. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> so uh those are our comments. Thank you guys for commenting, showing us some love. It's good to get some of those uh positive comments. I enjoy that. So yeah, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you guys think of the episode. And I know some of you might think, man, I don't want to comment on every every episode. Do it. Com- yeah, comment on the whole episode. Watch that. Leave a like. Subscribe. You know, talk about things that you that well, made you laugh. So then yeah. we can figure out, let's do more of that. Right. Because right now it's like, you know, just we're, we're firing in an empty, dark room. Or maybe leave some suggestions of topics you would like to hear us ramble on about Mm -mm. don't do that we don't listen to them (laughs) we have before actually i think yeah we did a couple times the 1980s yeah but yeah we'll uh we'll take them into consideration for sure yeah the board will hear it which is uh awesome transition into what this week's topic is um you might want to suggest some things after uh we talk about pens for an hour (laughs) hour this is gonna be insane change yeah well, how this came about is I have a an absolute fascination with pens. Yeah, these red ones? No, not those ones. No? I mean, I didn't even put that on the notes, but we could talk about that. How many pens you've taken from the lamp? Yeah, so that was stemmed from Wyatt Cook. That's why I had a listener of the show. I th- on maybe. occasion. Time yeah. to time. Uh, so he started that just uh, collecting lamp letter pens, you could say, rather than theft. Has a whole drawer of them. So I started doing it too. And I think if we combine forces, 
it'd probably be more than some militaries out there. They say the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> so so you say. are pretty mighty. <laughs> you know, man, if they translated, I would have a whole, what do they call a room filled with weapons? An armory? Yeah. I'd have a whole armory of swords. You'd have a fleet, dude. Yeah. I wish that. I wish I had a pen that turned into a sword. I'm sure there might be one. Yeah. Or sword pen? I mean, they make yeah. pens. I got to go click on my pens. I want the pen for men in black. Can you imagine? You yeah. Ran it. Yeah. The forget pen. Yeah. Can you imagine you had a pen that turned into a sword, but you didn't know it? Like you took it from a bank. Just never clicked pen. it again? And you never click it again? Or maybe you have to do like a, a combination lock click, like yeah. Morse code, like click, 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 click. Yeah. You'd be good at the clicks, Liam. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a natural. Yeah. <laughs> Bilingual myself. But yeah, I got a quite <laughs> bilingual. Got quite a few lamplighter pens. So if the lamplighter is looking for your pens, I will sell them back to you at a reasonable price. Twelve dollars a pen. Um, reasonable. Yeah, it is I'd in this say. economy. So yeah, I have this fascination for pens. I love pens. Do you guys have? Are you indifferent to your pens you use? Like if you're signing something, I'm or a you're big writing something. Pencil guy. You're a pencil I go guy. through a lot of pencils at work. Just because you lose them or because you actually write no, so like hard? I use them and then I, you know, get them mess down to the them up and yeah. Remember how cool that used to be back in like middle school? If someone had a comically small pencil <laughs> because they just sharpen it all day. Yeah. yeah. Like, check out my small pencil. It's not practical at all. <laughs> it's, but it's, the just, right it's just lead and eraser. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Huh? But it just shows you their loyalty. I, yeah, I don't know if there was a loyalty behind it. I think people just thought it was a gimmick and they would just yeah. chop chop it down next to the eraser and then sharpen it. Does this fascination stem into markers? Because I do happen to love <laughs> a nice, fresh marker. I got nothing on markers on here, but we could dive into it. We do have a pr live producer that uh, if we need to find anything, we can. Yeah. When did markers start outpacing the pen? <laughs> <laughs> outpacing. <laughs> Wonder, well, here's what I'm wondering. I want to go back to pencils. One, I do think it stems from loyalty because all the people I know that would use their pencil to the last strike of graphite. Most loyal people I know. Respect that. Dude. And why yeah. do they call it lead? If it's graphite. Probably used Is to be lead? lead. Yeah. Do you think Probably, it used yeah, to be? Used to be in a, lead used to be in everything. There's another there. one for you, Nathan. Used to be in paint. Used to be in your kid's milk. It's used still in, in the water in Michigan, so it's pretty <laughs> practical. Yeah, they got Is it Is that everywhere. their problem there? In Flint, yeah. Yeah. That's where we dropped off all the pencils. Poor them in, <laughs> poor them in Flint. It's an accidental cargo shipment dropped <laughs> into the river. Yeah. It was worse than the ammonia train spill right outside of town. <laughs> it was just a bunch of Ticonderoga number twos. <laughs> so in the 1940s is when the first felt tip marker was created. Nice. And then pencils have never had lead inside of it. Um, it just says standard pencil cords have always been made of graphite and not lead. The substance was historically misidentified as lead and it just stuck. How stupid. I think it works, though. It's, I mean, it's much One easier to say, I'm almost out of lead, or then saying, mm, I would require some more graphite to mm. finish this paper. Mm -hmm. Graphite's running low. <laughs> I like how bink, your, bink. your precursor <laughs> words also changed when you went to the graphite sentence. Well, hey, I'm running out of lead. Not translate to, hey, I'm running out of graphite. It's like, I would require some more graphite. <laughs> it's just more nerdy. Like, you know, like yeah. an absolute just, if you say graphite instead of lead, I just, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're a loser. It's too many syllables. Yeah. yeah. Graphite. Lead. Were you guys a mechanical pencil or a regular number two pencil? Mechanical people? for Back sure. Back in the day, it was mechanical, but now a, a wood you pencil. Love a good wood. Yeah, dude. Feel, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you probably, you're at the point in your life where you're using the square ones, the rectangle. Yep. Pencils. Exactly. You have like to. Carpentry pencils. Yeah, yeah carpentry. But big ones. You, why are they flat? You can't so you sharpen. Can hold them in your ass. If you have to. I think it's so they don't roll away from you as you're working. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I don't actually know the answer to this. That's probably it. That's a pretty <laughs> that good a answer. Lot of sense. That has to be it. Nathan, can you look that up? It's very also very Sorry, nice. We're like really take rapid a, fire uh, at you. Gatlin gun like, full of stupid ass on questions. On the side of my hard hat. Right on uh, the nuts. Is it so it doesn't yeah. roll away? God, God dude. His, chalk another one up for me of shit that nobody should know, but I do. <laughs> and also. <laughs> um, the winning team. It's. They're shaped the way they are to allow for a wider and thicker lead. So it's like Don't more break. durable and yeah. also to make it easier to grip with work gloves. See, how cool is yeah. that? That's that's you're, better than revolutionary, the, really. When you're, you're not doing calligraphy with a carpenter's pencil. Oh, sure. you want to bet? <laughs> Dude, I can you make it look see, like a Jackson Pollock see, painting. 
That's not good. <laughs> Obviously, that's, it was. That's Didn't just, he have Parsons most, everywhere? Most yeah. expensive Jackson Pollock painting. I want to see it. Well, are we talking expense or like subjective? Tell me it's not good. You're being you're being hurtful. It's not good. It's that, unique that's to your everybody. Opinion. That's art. I it just saw a bunch unique. of paintings full of blowjobs last night. That's true. Downtown. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I was like, where? I'll He's lie. like, open my closet. I'm like, I forgot I got that one. But no, this dude, he, he's he got a pretty vivid imagination. Yeah, has or, to. Or and was it imagination? There's a lot of we oral don't know sex. If, if someone was... Or he could have been watching. How yeah. detail? Very. That's the most expensive one? 140 million. Boom. Yeah. You just say or, that's not good. Like a I landfill. Can, yeah. That's so cool, man. Top down shot of a landfill. That's just the rage of the human existence all put all onto the a canvas. Right. All the lines. That's, That's yeah. what it was, I'm the, sure. It the couldn't have been the Parkinson's. Hey, the, the, the patterns are so complicated. <laughs> and the guy that was painting it looked a lot like me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Shana did give me a Dan Flash's shirt. No, oh, I saw that. Yeah. That's, That's pretty cool. Picture, yeah. It's pretty sweet. I'm pumped for that. I just need a fedora with safari flaps that's yeah you better keep her around she does stuff like that yeah she's like i got you a gift and i'm like oh gosh i open it it's a pair of like brooks shoes a box like did you give me these ugly ass running shoes like is that a sign i gotta run opened it dan flashes it's pretty way cooler yeah maybe you can wear them with your stupid ass chelsea boots (laughs) (laughs) wouldn't uh wouldn't match but yeah i'm definitely wearing that to vegas please yeah it's cool that the uh the engineering you wouldn't think engineering goes into a pencil but one problem, one guy must have been like, this fucking pencil <laughs> keeps rolling away from me. We're right. Make it flat. Yeah. They should over engineer it, put like a little triangle stopper on it. That's like. Or make it. A, do like they a have book. triangle pencils? You know, the hold books up yeah. on a shelf. That would feel good in the hand, I think. I don't think so. A big triangle they pencil. Good. Just the I just, I, just I want to grip it like a, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a, what, what, what do you grip Got like fucking, that? Uh, huh. A wooden spoon. <laughs> Big thick one, jellyfish spoon. net. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Firmly. They grasped. have a triangle pencil. Yeah. How do you sharpen that? Sharpener. Knife. How do you start it though? Sharpener. It's a knife. All sharpener holes that I've ever seen are circular. You can still put triangles in them. I've been watching a lot of videos, but you can't put a circle in a triangle. <laughs> No, you cannot. Have you yeah, seen you that can. video? That's you right. You might have some. Be really small. The square one. Have you where the guy is playing the little kid game, and it's like fit the shapes into the right one, but oh. they all go in the fit in the square hole. So he goes, yeah. "Where does the circle go?" That's right, the square one. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right, let's get back into pens. Yeah. So three types of pens we're going to go over today. I do have a favorite pen. What is it? G two Pilot. Yep, that's it. Pilot it's G2. everybody's is favorite. It You're so basic. Mm, probably O five. Probably because it Summer is the of only pen. Was big. I don't like too fine point of pen when I'm writing because then I feel like it requires me to be more steady with my stroke. Yep. But <laughs> why do you look at me like that when I said that word? I'm just curious about your thoughts on pen strokes. But then when you start getting too thick, then it just looks like a third grader anyway. I just don't want it to spill, you know? Yeah. Because at what point, bleed, like if you your stop? pen's that thick, you might as well just write with a Sharpie, you know? Right. And that's the other, crazy. I hate f- like fine point Sharpies with like the little needle that comes out of the end. Yeah. I think unless you have like superb handwriting. What about the dual wheel Darth Maul Sharpies that one side's fat, one side's skinny? Revolutionary. I think this has changed the game for a lot of people. Yeah. It's pretty for cool. a lot of people. <laughs> In the thick Sharpies, man, are they hard to come by, but. Are you talking like the ones that are like a block on the end? Yeah. Dude, so cool. I used to steal a bunch of them when I worked at Menards. Because yeah, you use them to write on, uh, like, tags for deliveries. Okay. And they're just these big, massive jars. You walked around, felt like you were carrying, like, a Mossberg pump, dude. Like, <laughs> those things are sweet. It's like, look at this paintbrush I got. It's like, that's a Sharpie, bro. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we're going to be talking. That's my favorite pen, too. Yeah. Except I, I'm an 07 guy. I keep I, I keep a few of those in standby. What I always other? have one in my checkbook. I have one in my drawer if I ever need to write something down. Can you guys always name works. more than just that pen? You have one in your checkbook? Do you carry a checkbook around? No. You have a slot? You have a pen slot in your checkbook? No, I just clip it on the top side. Okay, fair. So it's on the outside. I thought you had like a sleeve. No, some some checkbooks like, you're, you're the kind of guy that also has like a passport book, a little sleeve you put your oh, passport yeah. in. Oh, you know? yeah. Nothing. Not they hate sure. those, by the way. Did you know that? Really? Border Patrol? Yeah. Well, it's like, why do you need a purse for your passport? So it doesn't get scuffed. Yeah. Yeah. It's an important document. Yeah. Scuffed? <laughs> Yeah, you don't want it to get all scuffed up. What are you doing up. with your passport that it's getting scuffed? I don't know, man. 
putting a bunch of jelly on it and jamming it up, <laughs> shoving it in an AK-47. Yeah. It's in my back pocket while I'm doing like turns through tight caves. I kept it in my, my front pocket while I did an Iron Man race. <laughs> so. That would be, I'm curious the shirt you'd wear then. Are you wearing a flannel for your Iron Man race? <laughs> yes. Sleeve it's a title. it's a button up like a office shirt button up but i cut the sleeves off i like that yeah it's like a chaotic office guy and then i leave the top three buttons undone so you i don't chafe ch- chest or chafe yeah chest chafing it's the worst yeah right on the nips dude that's gotta suck right yeah i mean it's never happened to me so i've heard i know people put tape over their nipples when they're on mm-hmm. yeah um I'm, I'm not that person i don't run yeah i was gonna say i don't <laughs> yeah can you imagine? Like, I'm just like, ah, I got to run out to my car quick. Tape my nipples. <laughs> just a little scotch. Out to the car. <laughs> I'm back in. Yeah. Untape my nipples. I'm going to run to the store. Just, yeah. Oh, man. Um, But back to Pick pants. your nipples to get in the car and drive. There. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run to the store quick. Yeah. I'm just um, run some errands with me. Can you guys name other pens than the G2 Pilot? No, because they I, all suck. I don't know if there's a, there's a cl- there's a lot of really good pens Bic. out there. I'm sure you've covered. Bic, that's like the, uh, yeah, those are like the see-through ones. Hate those. It's like cheap ones. Yeah. 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 Not a fan of those. Yeah. I don't know. I think Pilot is doing great at branding. They're the only pen brand I know. Right. They Well, they made the shit out of that pen, man. Like, yeah. yeah did. If anybody's going to get close to perfection as that. humans, like, I think that's the thing that as as a species that we have gotten close to perfection on but, is the G2 yeah. pilot. Cause it does feel good. Yeah. I would. Yeah. If you were the president of arguing that I'd be your vice president. Like it's, it's more perfect than what, what are some things that you think humans did that are perfect? And I'll tell you why the G2 pilot pen is more perfect. Um, bathroom rugs, bathroom rugs, G2 pilot pen, more perfect. <laughs> That's a great argument. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's more, and then you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, when I put my rug and leave it in my truck overnight, and it's really cold. Yep, that thing don't work too well as a rug because first of all, it's not in my bathroom. It's fair, but my pen, my G two Pilot pen, stays yep. out in my truck, doesn't freeze, still writes. Nice little. Is it ballpoint? Ballpoint. Yep. Yeah. What about shoelaces? Damn, we did good on that. For the most part, for the most part, I have laceless shoes. Not on, so it's like you don't need Looking them. At your laces right? Yeah, right so now. I'm saying like you could get by without shoelaces. Yeah, do you think you could get by without the Pilot G2? I, I'd crumble. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> my whole world would collapse. Yeah, I don't think I'm I could, nothing honestly. without my Pilot. Yeah, there's just something that feels when you write with the Pilot G2. I have shitty handwriting, and I think that pen makes my handwriting better. I really do. Like it, it's different for somebody Maybe like you who writes all neat. You don't. You're all. I don't write living. that much, though, dude. You have some of the nicest handwriting I've ever seen. Did I lost it? Bullshit. Right. <laughs> get get him. Get him, a, get him a writing utensil. Nathan. Get this man. A sheet yeah, of paper I want right now. Right on your wall. <laughs> I know high school was way better, but I stopped writing as much as high school. Now it's a little. I mean, it's still better than your guys's. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but it skews more. Everybody's got me beat. No. Not me. Yeah. You write like Da Vinci. I, I got bad handwriting. Dude, I got terrible handwriting. Look at. Yeah, I yeah, think you guys just don't care very much. No, because it's stupid. You could still read it. I think writing yeah. writing has almost been outpaced now. Typing. How long? Yeah. I mean, we quit doing cursive in schools. How long until we stop writing it all? It's a lost art, man. It's going to be like the Latin language. Like people need to keep pushing this on kids. How do we get rid of writing? I think it's something that just fizzles out. Technology's so big now. Bombs. You think there'll be a point when we don't have writing? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's what? What point are we just going to be able to communicate? Well, you still have to have without even like a signature, like for documents. Why? To thumbprint. To what if it turns into me sticking my thumb on there? Very well, could actually. Now that you bring it up, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, you just sign a blood oath. Yeah, I don't know if I go that far. Because I, I could every s- time I go to the bank, I gotta <laughs> cut your hand. <laughs> just a little prick, like I it. got my. Just get diabetes first, and then you'll get used Perfect to it. Because then you got to prick your finger, right? Yeah, if you want to test your numbers. 
Yeah. On a little strip. I went and got my TSA pre check this last week, and we had, you had to do a thumbprint for it. You actually had to do four fingers like this and then two thumbs. Holy crap. I could see you just if you go somewhere and you got a sign. Like, let's say you're buying a house. Hit them with your thumb real there. quick. Yeah. It's unique to everybody. So, and you can't forge it. There's some like sci fi, there's some like Kingsman movies and stuff where they have briefcases with thumbprint things. Yeah. What if I just skin you? <laughs> like my skin off? Yeah. Like an animal, I'll skin your hands. Where where human skin gloves you like that one serial killer. Yeah. What do you what do you do when you don't have a fingerprint? That's why I was just thinking. What if I stick my fingers in lava? Yeah, or I was gonna say acid, but because that's what yeah, like top. That's what mobs do. They burn their fing- they burn their fingertips off, so there's no trace. Really? God. Yeah, they burn their their. Uh, I suppose because then you can touch anything in their house. Mm-hmm. It will never know. be traced. Never be traced back to you. Yeah. They're figuring out ways around my whole system. I have you. How is mm-hmm. that? How does anyone get caught? Why don't they just talk? Call they don't. you. <clears throat> like any criminals are like, we got his fingerprints. You could just go and be like, why don't you burn your fingerprints off? Yeah. Or wear a glove. Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> or, or skip the pain of burning your fingerprints <laughs> yeah. off and buy a $2 or, pair of gloves. Or wear a glove. Yeah. That's like, that's like burning your fingerprints off, but you can take it on and off. Yeah. You can reverse it. So what's the point of fingerless gloves then? Hobos. <laughs> that's it's easier that's to carry good. your stick and knapsack around. <laughs> yeah. Better Prevents grip. the callus buildup on your palms. Yeah. It's easier to grab the coins out of the cup when people put it in there. Easy to sit there and hold your stupid little fake sign that says <laughs> homeless help. Yeah. And then I watch you walk back and get in your $50,000 SUV. Yeah. Fingerless gloves, man. I was never a fan of those. No, it's some psychopath stuff. Yeah. But yeah, let's talk about pens. Um, We haven't got into the notes at all. Uh, (laughs) Ballpoint pens, known for their reliability and long-term lasting ink. Fountain pens, valued for their smooth writing experience. And gel pens, popular for their vibrant colors. Uh, Do you know the order? You want to take a stab at what the order of release was for those three? Uh. Fountain pens got to be first. Fountain quill. pens were first Fe- because feather. it was feather and quill. Yep. And then you dip it in the ink. So that was first. And then what are my other options? Ballpoint and, and gel. gel. And then it was ballpoint and then yep. it was gel. Yep. Yep. That is right. Which I don't know how we classify, you know, finding an animal, ripping its skin off, and then dipping it in ink and calling it a pen. What? If I find an animal, rip a feather off, mm-hmm. start dipping it in black liquid, start writing with it. I'm like, oh, there's a pen. That's the first pen. You know why they did that? No pens? <laughs> yeah, that too. Because they didn't invent the gel yet. <laughs> because the feathers, it's hollow on the inside. Really? Yeah, so that's why. So the ink would store in those things? Yes. And then it would drip down? Yes. Don't say yes. Like I should have known that. <laughs> <laughs> have you? You? I'm sure in your touched a feather in no. your 25 years of life. You have you not seen a feather? I've seen a feather. They're very light. They are quite light. A lot of people compare them to a brick. In apples and oranges. Yeah. But no, but they're hollow. Yeah, they're hollow on the inside. It can be light without being hollow, though. It but can is be it lighter, lighter if it's hollow. Yeah. But Let's I've never, it. I've never, have you guys ever seen a feather and you're like, let's really see what's going on here. I will. I mean, I see. Yeah. We feathers do a lot frequently. of feather stuff. And you really get close to them. Yeah. <laughs> I pull. Well, whenever I shoot a pheasant, I'd pull their tail feathers out. And yeah. If they're pretty long. Yeah. I got them up in the sun visor of my truck. Yeah. I got a few up there too. How is it easy to pull out? Yeah. Like a yeah. children's tooth. I've never Eve pulled out easier. a children's tooth before, <laughs> but can you imagine though? I can, I mean, I, there was one time when I was losing a tooth when I was a kid and it was really close. And so I just punched myself in the side of the face a couple of times <laughs> and it fell out. Serious? Yeah. Dead serious. Yeah. Did it hurt? No. Huh. Just, it was just, it was ready and I didn't feel like digging in there and pulling it. <laughs> uh, at that point, yeah, because I decided to punch my own face. So I said, <laughs> time for this. The vacancy is, it's yeah. up. You got to go. You, you didn't just think like it's pull out my fingers? No. Or did I, you have gloves I think, on? That's Do you guys a, ever do no the, gloves. the string to the door, slam the door? No, I think that's just for movies. Maybe it, I did. Maybe it. at one point I did. Really? I would just think lassoing your tooth with a small fishing line would be so hard. 
you know? Look in the mirror. It, but it's such fine motor skills. I think someone has to do it for you. That's why the whole thing is, it's yeah. I don't trust dad that they do it and they tie it on there and then they, they go, all right, sign the door. I don't trust a six year old to tie any kind of knots, whether exactly. they have a rope or that's what, like, a, what that's if they had their tie, what, what if they had their knot tying badge? Well, I was gonna say that's very beginning stages of Boy Scout, so they're probably not even two. But once they get that badge, you know they've tied the knot fifty different ways. <sighs> yeah, I think that's what you got to do. Were you guys Boy Scouters? No, I feel like we've talked about this before. I went for a week. I signed up for Boy Scouts and the instructor never showed up and planned anything for us. And so that was the end of my Boy Scout career. I think the closest I got was my aunt talking to me about going to Camp Bentley, which is a church camp. That's Boy Scoutish. It's close. I went to a church camp once. It was cool. Yeah. Which one was it? I don't know. I went to a, I, I went to a few of them. I went to tri- I went to Triangle Y and Metagoshi. Yeah, for a lot of years. Triangle Y was fun. That was how long did you go? Like how long were those camp sessions each? Like a week? Oh, like a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd spend like you'd spend a whole week there, pretty much, and just got to vibe out. I mean, you got all your meals provided. They had like a big pond at Triangle Y with a big rope swing. Mm-hmm. They'd have like a bunch of different games. I tell you what, Metagoshi got it right though. Uh, we played Boofer. That was a fun game. You would take tube socks and fill them up with flour. And so when you hit somebody with them, you'd get covered in flour. So you were out. And so the, that's the, not the, what I was picturing. Boofer. <laughs> the counselors would run around and these socks, I mean, they're full of flour. So they probably yeah. weigh like a pound or two and you could throw the hell out of these things. <laughs> and so there was, you <laughs> felt like you were at war, dude. Yeah, when when you're like say. eight years old, you are at war. There's, yeah. there's flour How many kids socks did you make flying cry? around. Oh, a handful. A handful. I don't think, I don't know. I can't remember if we were allowed to throw them or not. I think it was counselors we, versus kids. We played something like that too, except where we just made a kid stand in front of the swings while we were swinging and hit him with our feet. <laughs> You'd kick him? Yep. <laughs> hit him with our feet. Stand That's right a good there. way to say kick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we're, yeah. we're swinging and we come down and you just straight leg it like you're, you know. Oh, and just boof. Right in the chest? Him, yeah, right in the chest. Just send him flying. <laughs> how funny would that be if that's how people said kick? Yeah. Hit him we hit him with, with our feet to death. <laughs> that's the new UFC lingo. <laughs> yeah. He's been hitting him with his feet a lot oh, this round. There's a good <laughs> side. Hit him with the feet. Yep. God. Hit him with our feet. Yeah, I like that. A spinning um, back foot hit. <laughs> uh, all right. First pen. Earliest pens were quills used in the Dark Ages, made from bird feathers. Primarily goose or swan. Thank you, Liam. What were they doing before that, I wonder? Carve. Stone. Just smearing their blood on walls. Right. Car- carving well, in probably the caves. Not blood, but they would make a mixture of some sort. Clay. They'd yeah. water down clay and be able to smear it around. What's that stuff called that they used in like Arizona and New Mexico? Build their houses? Clay. Mm. Clay uh, is clay. Clay. There's a, a name for it. Stucco. Nathan. Stucco? What? What? Stucco. <laughs> that's what that's on the outside of a lot of bars. Yeah, but like in it's talking a long time 58, ago. Yeah. Stucco. Yeah. They didn't stucco. Maybe stucco is just like a kind of like a concrete Adobe. Mixture. That's a, Adobe. I clay. think that's a type of house. It's a program to edit videos. I knew your dumbass was gonna say some <laughs> stupid shit. I, I <laughs> come gotcha. a, sorry, coming a mile away. <laughs> um have you seen those videos of the people making houses out of straw? Like on the roofs? Yeah. You're talking yeah. Amish? Likely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do it every year. It's a pretty sweet process. It looks they, cool. They jam all the straw up there and then they cut it and then they fan it out a little bit. Yeah. Do another layer underneath. Yeah. I get it if you're like, let's build this cool museum village. But if you're <laughs> like, I'm going to live in this thing, I'm doing she rock and it works, right. yeah, but I mean, imagine how much money you save. Yeah, and then you have to live in a straw hut. Straw bales it aren't works, cheap. Though. Yeah, what do you got, Nathan? It's called a thatched roof. Yeah. Um, the United Kingdom, Margaret Germany, Thatcher came up with it. Netherlands, Denmark. Uh, it says there's more than sixty thousand that thatched roofs in the United Kingdom, and like a hundred and fifty. That seems like a, a dumb UK thing, doesn't? It? <laughs> yeah, like they're just over there doing yeah. like unnecessarily dumb shit, you know. They're supposed to last <laughs> really than, just staying in the stone age for you. Right, UK. like they're supposed to last more than like 50 years. If what they're done, right? I thought they had to replace them frequently. Okay. How long does this house last? 
normal shingles. I think it's like all of it. Probably about the same. All less. It. It, it's less. But is that just roofs or do they do the walls with that? No, they do the walls with Adobe. <laughs> with stucco. Yeah, Adobe you can almost stucco. use the, the straw, like some like rebar, some like reinforcement in, in the... Well, rebar I'm is sure they very rebar. thick and heavy <laughs> and metal, and straw is not any of those things. I'm sure they rebar is they, right in their list of <laughs> ingredients for building that house. I yeah, think that's I'm sure just the, the hotel that we're building up. right now. If they ran out of rebar, their next <laughs> option would be to go to straw. I, I do think that could be there. Hey, if you tie enough straw together, it's like a rope. Right. Just enough braided together and it's strong. You know what that's called? Tensile strength. Tensile strength. So you get enough straw tied together. How much tensile strength could you have? A, an ass load, dude. Depends on how much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's. I bet I, I could tow a truck with it. 100%. Yeah, it might be like really thick. That's a few thousand pounds, man. 15 to 30 years for your roof. 15 to 30. For a regular shingle roof. roof, Yeah. That's why they got rid of T-locks because they were too durable. Really? Pretty much. T-lock, T-lock shingles, the old ones before these, they like were indestructible. Who got rid of them? Big shingle. Big, yeah, big (laughs) roofing. (laughs) So why don't we just put like thicker shit up there? Metal. Just go with the. Too heavy. Too big. On the ends. (laughs) But, like, couldn't you do really thick shingles that are not rubber? Shingles are just rubber. So I looked up why they got rid of the T-locks and said when they came out, T-locks were a heavier shingle with much more asphalt content than the other different shingles. And uh, so what happened is asphalt prices increased and fillers were added and the shingles became thinner, more brittle, and less capable of living up to the name. Hmm. So they got cheaper. So they spun it. Had they not, though, they'd hold their value. I feel like, yeah, I feel like a lot of things we get screwed on, like big shingle. I I have this thought process with chapstick. Chapstick does not cure chapped lips. Because if it did, chapstick companies would go out of business. I buy one stick of chapstick. I think it's something that's recurring. I think it it's temporary relief, and then it makes your lips more chapped, so you have to put more Afterward, chapstick on. I, you got to quit licking your lips so much. Like, are you looking always just at a big plate of food? Just I'm not a big go lip licker. I think you're licking your lips more than you think. I don't use chapstick. I can well, tell. that's why your lips get chapped. <laughs> it's dehydration mm-hmm. and saliva on Every the lips. Day. I think it's just when it's dry. That too. It's dry outside. And then you end up licking your lips more. You try drinking water. I drink water. How much? A couple gallons a day. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Do you? You buffalo? <laughs> you buffalo. Couple gallons a day? Yeah. You have. You buff- what do you, you, you think <laughs> big water's coming or what? And they're going to take it away? A buffalo. Yeah, I'm going to start having water a Water buffalo. Oh, well, yeah, but like camel. I'm gonna start having a hump in my back. Well, they don't call them water camels; they call them water <laughs> buffaloes. They don't, True. dude. It's insinuated because I the camel he, is all about water, and I think the water buffalo just lives in the water. Yeah, I don't think he really is holding water. Hey, but I'm if, sure it does if, drink a lot of water. It's probably more than me. If I, if I lived in water, I bet my water intake would be through the roof. <laughs> Do you think fish need to drink water? They don't drink it; they filter it. Yeah, but like yeah. they're like they, a Brita. But do they the need sea. hydration? You know. Or do you no. think they just absorb it? Absorb. Yeah. Always just living it. Yeah, I never wondered about it. Like, do you think they think the same thing about us? Do you think they get thirsty? Yeah. Like, is a fish getting thirsty out here? If it was out of water, <laughs> yeah. Fish out of water. But that's breathing and drinking. That's two different things. Yeah, but they're not breathing. They're filtering. R- right. But that's how they breathe. You Do you get what I'm getting at here? I think you're fighting a losing battle here. I think you are just an absolute pain to talk to sometimes <laughs> yeah that's so fun it happens it's the it's my favorite pastime i love doing that to you i love doing that to anybody like when you ask me how i stuffed those shells that i made for the super bowl <laughs> and i said my hands uh, all right modern evolution of pens the development of the fountain pen in the 19th century marked a significant <laughs> improvement in writing technology it was the continuous ink flow which now that you say the feather would just store the ink in a little 
tube mm-hmm. and then it just falls out. It's got to mm-hmm. be what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense now. The idea for a pen that wouldn't need constant dipping emerged in Arab Egypt around 974. All right, get rid of all the pens. We're done with them. We're <laughs> done with them. I'm not being associated with uh, one that. person requested a non leaking pen. So why, if it's stored ink in it, why did you have to keep dipping it? Cause it, it didn't store up. that much. So they just wanted something that's stored. Dude, like the hollow I mean, part totally of a feather like, is like that thick. Well, I know the thickness, but how far up does it go? Not very. Yeah. You dip your whole arm in the ink <laughs> and it's up to the tip of the feather. You'd have to, but then you'd, the whole feather would be covered in ink and then it would, useless do you think they could cut the feather part off and just keep the stem mm, there's an idea no one ever did that but then you don't look, look as cool. cool yeah that's why they did it for looks probably yeah i mean you, I you, I mean, you, you, you imagine signing a document with a peacock feather that's like this long pretty badass dude <laughs> you want to do a bank next week and do that yeah. who the fuck is this guy he, oh i should start bringing my that we could add that to the uh comically small signatures gang we go to the bars and instead of a pen, we bring our own little little jar, jar of, ink. of ink. Yeah, and, and a, pull a feather. A feather. We just put the this. feather in our ear. Yeah, like what do you got that for? Well, in case I need to sign anything. Well, it's a feather yeah. in my cap. Yeah, like Yankee Doodle. Oh, I was gonna say like uh, the guy that came here to North Dakota with Skakawea, Robin Hood. Yes, <laughs> and Batman. <laughs> no. Yeah, Robin Hood and Batman. <laughs> yeah, saving Gotham. <laughs> One signed document at a time. <laughs> <laughs> one small <laughs> sign document. One comically small sign document. Yeah. Oh, um, Lewis and Clark. Yes, Lewis and Clark. Which? Oh, you were being serious. You didn't remember? No. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Robin um, Hood. <laughs> he had a feather in his cap. Rich to, <laughs> did he give to the poor? Yeah. Yeah. How dumb is that? I think somebody should have taught Robin Hood a lesson. I think somebody should to have a pe- beat to the have shit a out of him for fifteen cap? minutes. You have a carpenter's you pencil in your cap. What, how's that any different? No, I'm talking about stealing. Yeah, but well, he, he like did it for Robin the benefit Hood. of the But course. actually, you know what? Maybe maybe that'll be the, the side of my battle that I'm going to fight for, is pencils over your stupid-ass feather. Pencils over feather. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what your premise would be quite yet, but... It's time to change, man. Get with the times, dude. <laughs> I think we should go back. Me Time is marching game. on. I'll do it. God, that'd be so funny. Where do we get just ink like that? Can we just empty a bunch of pens into a little octopi? You could, vial? you could, but I wonder if that would be like octopi. the same, the same ink that they would have used then. Octopies don't ink. Squid, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? I wonder. I would like to do. I that. guarantee you could get it. You can. I mean, it's the same thing. You can get it on Amazon, dude. Yeah, yeah. Old you can order feather and ink jar. I want to. I want to catch the feather that I use, though. Catch it? What? Well, I've catch the animal to take the feather. How are you going to catch it? How do you catch them? I shoot them. <laughs> Gun. I'm do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shoot them out of the, you the don't easiest. Have, we got to get you it's, into a lot more yeah, raffles I mean, then. <laughs> it's probably not as easy as like setting up a trap for a bird that would land in your right. backyard. You do like a Is little. Is that pretty easy? Uh, yeah. Depends I could do it for you. Yeah. Find a way. I'm I got to do it for myself. No, okay, I could walk you through it if you're Coaching. asking for it. Yeah, but we could catch a couple birds. You set up a little box with some bird food in it, and then you just have the door tied to a string, and you sit outside your window with the window cracked <laughs> and the string coming in, and then as soon as they go in there, you drop it, and a sentry gun goes off inside of it. <laughs> it just lights the bird up. <laughs> I, I'd love to see you just grab the bird and just squeeze. Can you imagine you drop the string and a grenade fell into it? <laughs> It just you might blows not get up a feather. Bird, yeah. Blows up the bird house. You have to look for the feather on the ground. Yeah, I'd like to try to catch a bird. I hadn't thought about getting a birdhouse just to get more animals around here. I thought you were like not big on wild animals. I'm not really. You could observe from a distance, though. I'd like to have a crow. Yeah, I want to get a pair of binoculars. Raven. Yeah, something a crow, raven. I'll sell you my binoculars. I want to win them. <laughs> Oh, there any cool. binocular raffles? We can set one up <laughs> every week. You can every week you can draw for it. Every it's week just you can, me buying into Liam's binocular raffle. Yeah, you yeah. can give Liam twenty bucks every week, and he can decide if he's going to give you his binoculars. <laughs> yeah. Didn't win this week. Yeah, you lost this week, pal. Sorry. Fuck. Next week I got it. <laughs> so you, I paid you like two hundred ten dollars. Like, all right, it's time to give them to him. Screw the Mega Millions. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm buying these tickets for a pair of 13 <laughs> year old binoculars that I've had sitting in my truck. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, possible early design designs for a reservoir pen were found in Da Vinci's journals, suggesting that he may have created a prototype using gravity and capillary action. Are we convinced that he was actually like a, a real person, or was he a time traveling guy? Um. He he knew a lot. Dude, His he had like helicopter like uh, designs and stuff like that. I wonder yeah. if he is a time traveler. You know, like Could it's possible. Well be. Didn't Da Vinci die like not that long ago? Or is that somebody else? Because somebody else like just, oh, I think it was Einstein. I think Einstein died in like the 1900s. Yeah. And I thought he was like 5,000 years old. <laughs> he looked really? like it. He did. Old people look like Einstein? Is that what you're getting at? Einstein looked like he's 5,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his hair probably. But I'm just thinking, like, I didn't know that. So maybe Da Vinci was, like, one of these people. But I'm thinking he was probably 14th, 15th century. He was in the Renaissance era. Mm -hmm. 15th. 15th century, yeah. That's the 1400s. Mm -hmm. That's when they were doing the all of the Renaissance festivals. Yeah, what, where, what, like, LARPing is? Yeah, live action role play. Yeah. They've carried that on till today. For some reason. I think, we, I think we could do it for reasons we can't. Answer. I want to show up though. And we're going to do, we're going to get like Minecraft heads, put those on and get like the foam swords and pickaxe and stuff. And that's how we're going to do it. Go At what point park. is LARPing just like a play? You just have to be standing on a play. When people just pay to, to see scripted, it. Scripted and viewers. Yeah. <laughs> if people are paying you to watch it. Mm -hmm. So could we go LARP? At Oak Park and sell oh, yeah. tickets, would it be a play? Or do we have to be standing on a stage? Yeah, if people come by, even though it is a public park, they do have that little amphitheater there, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. we could go on that and and do something. And if people come by, we just beat the shit out of them until they give us money. And then we say, okay, you watch. We'll LARP And then them. it's not a LARP. Then it's just a stage play. We're like Shakespeare. Yeah, it's what do they call those things where you go to the mall and everybody just starts dancing? Flash mob? Yeah, we'll just flash mob beat the hell out of them. <laughs> Genius. I don't think all LARPing is beating up people. Dude, that's it's Can what I it is. LARP like a what it, old something? Can what? I LARP like a 1930s like water park? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking. Like why? What is why live does action role play? Be, Can I role play like me being someone that works at a concessions and you're the customer? <laughs> like right now in the <laughs> living room after this? Yeah, would yeah, that yeah count I, guess, as I guess live action role play. Yeah, I guess that would count. Yeah, it does. Why when we think LARPing, why do we always think swords and shields? It's the most. It's what they're doing. Yeah. You could LARP any. I think they're, the LARPing they're community playing the role of those people. Yeah, I think the LARPing community is weird. <laughs> well, they're, they're playing a lot of D and D and stuff like that. Could you hang like, out in you, a lot of basements? Could you LARP a press conference from the 2011 flood? What's, Would, at what's, what point does that is LARPing essentially just a reenactment? Could you LARP Ray Rice in an elevator? Yeah, would that count? Yeah, I think. Uh, it, would that hold in court? <laughs> we were larping. <laughs> <laughs> Your Sir, Honor, you beat the shit out of your wife. <laughs> we were larping. I was just yeah. larping. We were yeah. just doing a reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were. Yeah. We were serious. Why did you drive away from the cops in your Ford Bronco? I was larping. I was. I was OJ's murder. I was pretending I was OJ. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. free to go. Uh, yeah, that's a LARP nine eleven. <laughs> All right, if we're moving honest. on. Back to the pens. Come on. Um, okay. Key to functionality. Understanding the air pressure's role in ink flow led to functional designs. So what is capillary action? Because that was a big thing. I think it's something about flow. fluid. Like when too much fluid goes into this one, it pushes it into the next tube, something or another. Mm -hmm. This is more so a question for you because yeah. it's some stupid fact that you'd know. For no Capilla well, capillary is a very small blood vessel. So context clues here. I'm thinking it's the flow of something in a really tiny tube with at certain pressure. Yeah. So probably right. I can't confirm or deny. Uh, but I feel like pens, like, why are they so complicated? 
I don't know if they are. They Anytime sure don't they're look talking about capillary They're intricate. Action. Like you look at a watch, you don't think it, but it is. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty intricate. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but you, yeah, but you know, watches are very intricate in their inside mechanisms. I think I mean, pens are probably like pens. that too. I don't yeah, think we could put a together plastic a plastic tube. Okay. I think right now, if I maybe was like, you William, could go make a pen, and you had this house. I had this house. Well, minus I would get the, the pen, pen out minus, of your minus the pen ingredients upstairs. <laughs> I would first of all have to figure out what I'm going to even make the ink out of, and I don't. Maybe okay, I I'll give you ink because you kind of need ink. Do you? Yeah, but I don't think you'd be able to put together like how to make it work, so the pen a so spring the ink comes out. You gave me a week. A week? Get I gotta have a week to I gotta have to make attempts. a makeshift pen. I gotta make it, you know, are, reasonable. Are you retarded? <laughs> oh, a week? You think you need longer? I'm just trying to buy no. myself a week in Easton's house. I was house. gonna say, <laughs> I, I want to find some other stuff he's got here. Yeah. I was gonna say, give me like three hours and a snack. I'll have it done. Like you think that's and, you, you and with ink in. provided? Ink provided? If I don't have ink, I'll, I'll make something be ink. I think ink is just what we call a substance. Ink is just a. Figment of our imagination. Right. Ink isn't real. You could do. Shut up. Do we know how planes work? <laughs> do we? We yes. don't know how Bluetooth works. So. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we do. do. I don't. <laughs> you have I don't to think at I this ever point. will. I've explained it to you so many times. I don't. Do you understand the strong and weak nuclear forces? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Hmm. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, got me. Yeah. I did get you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. In 1884, Waterman invented a practical fountain pen using capillary action from a reliable ink flow. The fountain pen became the writing instrument of choice by World War I, peaking from the 1900s to the 1960s. We good? Yeah. Uh, despite the rise of ballpoints, fountain pens remain popular for their smooth writing experience and are still used in many schools in Europe. Feels very European. Like, yeah. We're gonna use a fountain pen. Fountain pens now kind of look like you know the straws that you can get at Dairy Queen that's like a spoon plus a straw? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how the tip of them look. You just lower I don't the top know if I've it. ever seen a fountain pen. Google fountain pen for us, Nathan. I thought you had to open up a little a little thing on the body of it. And then you get your ink in there and you close you it. You gotta load it like an old musket. Pretty much. I'm not a big fan of like stupid. Every shit fountain being pen important. I've seen. Stupid shit being important. Yeah. So if I think something's <laughs> stupid, then yeah, that's it for me. So they're they're the pens that like sit on a rich person's desk. Yeah. yeah. See, stupid shit. Yeah. Like use a Pilot G two. Yeah. Why are you Grill. dumb? It's just one of those like, novelty items. People yeah, but like, like get a cooler. What is the most you item? would spend for one pen? Five bucks. Yeah. I mean, it better be a bitchin' pen. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> five bucks. Pen. I mean. Maybe like if I was the CEO of something and I wanted to have one of those, maybe I'd probably drop ten bucks on it. I almost spent a hundred dollars on a pen. Are you serious? Almost. I didn't do it. Why? What's the significance? Dude, of we're this pen? getting into Hello Fresh levels of stupid <laughs> here. <laughs> well, one, it like so it had a cap, and when you'd pull it out of the cap, the satisfaction, the noise that it was made. this like in person that you you thought on it? a video. I almost ordered it from the video. It was like whoop. Whoop, every single time and then you push it back in it was almost like the thing that would go ear, 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 ear. That, that would toy. make me immediately not want to buy but it. like better more satisfaction can we find the uh, link to this video we could type in peter mckinnon pen see what happens see what um, happens but yeah it was <laughs> and it was like a hundred dollars in like <laughs> computer's gonna blow up <laughs> <laughs> the FBI is gonna show up. See what happens. Just shoot yeah. him straight in the head. See how bad I just set you up. Yeah, yeah. Peter McKinnon. <laughs> There's no pen. such thing as a Peter McKinnon pen. It's actually it's, it's just a cold it's word. just a straight link to just a big old wiener on his screen. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a YouTube video where he talks about the pen he has. This guy's a loser, man. Yeah. If why? He, why? But if you why? had the money he, to buy a hundred dollar pen, cool pen. You? no, he didn't make it. He bought it. Loser. Dude, I cannot stress enough how dumb this is. How dumb a hundred dollar pen is. What if you write all day, every day? I don't care if I had all the money ever to be moneyed, dude. 
<laughs> I would never spend a hundred dollars on dumb shit. But even if you yeah. had all the And money? I'm I'm saying this from an objective standpoint. Right here, brass and copper pocket pen pro. Did you find it or no? Is it like one of those? Yep. That's it, I think. I yeah, wish the, that looks sweet. It I'm gonna uh buy one. here's the pot right there. I'm gonna see if I can pull up the what else is a hundred dollars? A hundred dollars? Yeah, like what are some other things that are a hundred dollars? Gas plus snacks for a road trip. Boom, do that. That's way cooler than a pen. Way yeah. less stupid. But um, if but if money didn't matter, I mean I didn't buy it. Have you ever seen those close. videos? Like you catch them on TikTok now and again. Like inventions a hundred dollars or less on Amazon that make your life that much easier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like those are those are cool videos. Those like are like you, you watch those. I would never buy a shoehorn. What? Have you ever used a shoehorn? What's that? Maybe a long time ago. It is you, a thing. You put it on. You put it on your heel when you're putting your shoe on, and you just pop it in. Your your foot pops right into your shoe. You don't have to bend over, tie it, untie it. These kids today, dude, are getting so lazy. You know what I do is I put my foot in my shoe. I, I thought the, the same house. thing. Dude, I thought the same thing until I had a shoehorn in my hand and put my foot in the shoe with the shoehorn. I'm totally. Do you have one now? No, it's at my uncle's house. Well, then it must not be that important to you. Hundred percent. Just sure. reminded me. <laughs> Get a, I'm gonna remember. order one. I'm gonna buy it right now. <laughs> Literally. Hundred percent sure. If my grandpa was here listening to this shit, yep, he'd sock you right in the face. It, it, he'd be like, "You are." Wouldn't let him. Right. Wouldn't let him. <laughs> Baddest fist away with my shoehorn. <laughs> yeah. Get back! I tell you. I really want them to make this noise, but I can't. They're not making it. I'll get it up after, hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure you will get it up. Pens. Just because, yeah. Sick. <laughs> All right, let's go on to, um, what do we want to talk about? The ballpoint pen. We haven't talked about the ballpoint pen. Uh, Laszlo Beery. There are so many Laszlo. accents over these words. Uh, a Hungarian journalist noticed the quick drying ink used in newspapers and sought to create a pen using similar ink to avoid smudging. First patented ballpoint pen was in 1938, revolutionizing writing due to its reliability. He did it with his brother, Georgi, who was a chemist. It's like, are we really bringing chemists into this to make a pen? That's what I'm saying by the over-engineered. Well, the ink has to be some sort of chemical compound. Yeah. Especially but are we, if you want it to quick dry. Are we trying to reinvent the wheel here? You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's. I mean, yeah, I think there's just got to be. Is. There's always got to be someone to keep people in check, you know. From doing stupid shit like that. Have you seen how a ballpoint pen actually works? It's a ball in there and it rolls and it gets ink when it's on the top side and then it rolls back. And then, the, yeah, it's just. Yeah. It's like a water cycle. Seen a video? I can of that? I can envision it now. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> but have you actually seen the video? <laughs> Liam's ballpoint pen? The pen. But actually, I, I it's fascinating. I'm sure at some point I've it's cool. it and that I like a little macroscopic lens of video of yeah. Uh, the ball is tiny. Yeah, yeah, it's inside a pen. <laughs> but it is like you wouldn't if you look at a pen like this, you would not be able to tell it's ballpoint. Does it have a ball on the end? You wouldn't be able to tell from the naked eye unless you got it really close to your eye. So then you could tell from the naked eye. But that's not the... I wouldn't say that's a naked eye. That's more of like a, with a t-shirt Clothed on. Clothed eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Half naked eye. Yeah. But like you're really If I'm study. looking at a pen and the, it is a circle on the end of it, <laughs> odds are pretty good at a ballpoint pen. But it's not really circle. It's pointy. There's just, What he's saying is there's a sphere in there i know what he's saying but it doesn't look if i'm looking at it, i'm like oh a pen it doesn't look like oh there's a sphere the end is yeah, like, if, I, if i held up a gel and a ballpoint next to each other you would know which one's which yeah maybe i think if i hand <laughs> if you handed me <laughs> why are you trying to devil's advocate 50 me so pens hard? yeah i could separate them into classifications not quickly this one's red this one's blue and so on fourth what are we doing there liam I want a podcast. We can't hear you. you Dude, I want a podcast. We're trying to make TV here, man. And we haven't stopped this entire time. How is it going to look when we're cutting clips out of this episode and you're sitting like that? The camera is going to be just the top of your head. No, the camera is going to be your junk. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) Got your ballpoint pen right here. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, so um, 
British Royal Air Force adopted the bureau pen, it was called, for its air crew due to its reliability at high altitudes where fountain pens were prone to leak. Yeah, they had to make a new pen for the NASA team. Nathan, oh, to work want, in zero G? You want to chime in on this? Nathan hates this fact. They Nathan, got, you want to chime in on this? I heard you hate this fact. Is it the space one? Yeah. Space pen. He just said they had to make a new pen for NASA. I fucking hate that. <laughs> Million dollar project. Yeah, well, Probably okay. more. Probably two. Probably four. Let's but, start another podcast just so we could talk about it again on a podcast because I haven't heard it on a podcast enough. <laughs> what are you doing, Broden, over there? Sorry. I'm trying to hold back a puke, man. What? A million dollars to build a pen? I got an idea. Fucking pencil. <laughs> That's what the Russians did. I'm pretty Dude. sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure we we made a brand new pen, and then I'm pretty sure some <laughs> other country used a pencil. I'm trying to hold back puke. <laughs> Call the government. Get the government on the line right now. I'm gonna, who, who was the guy? I'm going to call our at state the time senator. when Who was the president that said that's okay? Um, well... Because I'm going to reassassinate him. It was introduced into the U.S. market in 1945. Do you have that fact on there? The, the snippet of the, sh- the brand new pen that we made? No. Oh. Um, I don't think so anyways. No. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? No, I don't have it on here. But that's all right. My brain feels like Pull that, that Jackson Pollock painting right now. Pull that up. We'll talk about it. Another. Yeah, we'll do. It. We'll be the same podcast that everyone else is. And pull what up. Get me a, a dollar million. amount on that pen. No. What's it? Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> that's a producer putting his foot down. You're trumped We're by the peanut that. gallery. <laughs> that's all right. You get a brand new hat and you just start acting different. <laughs> Happens. It's a cool hat, at least. I do like that hat. Tinfoil hat. I'll trade you. <laughs> For a pen. I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for I'll, two yeah. cheeseburgers a day. This is a hundred dollar pen here. Sell me this pen. Its value what is, is what are we doing here? Completely you three. <laughs> <laughs> he just says random things. <laughs> you're trying, I don't even know what you're trying to do. You're talking about Tuesday and he's like movie quote, sell me this pen. What was the thing you said before? Sell that? me this pen. Yeah. I know the reference. What did I say before that? I don't know. Like I'll gladly pay quote. you Tuesday for yeah, a cheeseburger Tuesday today. for a cheeseburger. And I'm like, what? And then you're like, some of this pen. And then Bronze, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> We're off the rails. Uh, all right. Back on the rails. Here we go. The initial gel pen. Let's get into gel pens. Uh, the ball sign 280 is what it was called. It was introduced in Japan following, followed by the jelly roll with a G. Or maybe it's a jelly roll. GIF or GIF? You know, I don't. I don't know. I've, I've always called it uh, a uh, GIF. Me too. But they say it's GIF. I don't care what they say. But Are I, they smarter I, I than me? I tell them GIF's yeah. peanut butter. Yeah. They the don't peanut butter. Oh that. yeah. Definitely not a Peter Pan guy. How much peanut butter would you have to put into an AK before it jams? <laughs> <laughs> How it, many PB and jellies? Is it chunky or, or creamy? If you buy chunky peanut butter, I don't even know how those stay on the shelves. They should just be never made again. I don't, chunk mind. I don't uh, mind a little chunk in my peanut butter. God, I don't. I don't buy what's it. What's the chunk? Peanuts. peanuts. Ugh. What, what do you mean? What do you think it was? Rocks? Like <laughs> no, I just I knew it was peanuts, but it's like, what's the point of it? It's well, stupid. What's the peanut? Like a peanut has a very distinct shape and look. Yeah, but they're ground up. So it's ground up peanuts in there. Yeah, and peanut butter. That's uh. Yeah, I don't really. like chunky peanut butter. No, I don't like chunky anything really. I think some some things are supposed to be a certain way. Yeah, and then you go ahead and you start messing with them, and then that's when my blood boils. You know, <laughs> what do you got, Nathan? If we're gonna talk about that, we have to. I gotta ask you guys, what's your stance on putting like nuts and brownies? Yes. Who's eating them after? Yes, I'm a fan. You're a, you're a nuts and brownies guy. I hate nuts and brownies. I like it. Hate I it. I like things with some texture to them. Yeah, put some nuts in your cake then. Yeah. Okay. There, certain things are supposed to be not crunchy. Yeah. Like that's what my girlfriend does. It. My mom does it. She's like, oh, this just needs a little crunch. I'm like, no, it's soup. It doesn't need crunch. You don't need <laughs> s- put some pretzels in here. Yeah. They, seriously, they put crackers Chicken in. Chicken tortilla soup. You put crushed up chips in it. Okay. Yeah, you gave yeah. me one loophole to. A lot of soups here. 
I don't know if soup is the best option because soup is. I love pudding. unless it's like like those little oyster crackers. I'm mm. a crunchy soup guy. Like I'll throw in some crushed up chips or oh, even a chili. Like. I'll throw in some crackers. All right. Um, yeah. Is it chili a soup? Banana bread. What about that? No. No. With chocolate chips. If chocolate chips. Yes. Chocolate that's, chips fine. that's fine. That's yeah. fine. But don't start throwing nuts and dumb shit. My grandma made. I think me you're anti nut banana bread one time, and I was so excited. Like I opened the loaf in my car, started munching on it. Hit a nut out the window three blocks away from her house. Yeah. That's sad. Your grandma slaved over that and you threw it out the window. And she listens to this podcast. Yeah. Had a nut in it. I'm going to clip this and send it to her. See, yeah, Broden, I think you're just anti big nut. (laughs) Clip that. I I, I love (laughs) love nuts. You know what? Speaking of, I love nuts. (laughs) One of my coworkers has huge nuts. (laughs) Speaking of, dude. One of my coworkers, he might listen to this episode. Shout out Cody, big nuts. <laughs> Dude had, uh, he went and he didn't even realize it. He went to the doctor one day because he's planning on getting a vasectomy soon and uh, dropped his drawers. And the doctor's like, you have really big nuts. And so for a doctor to say that after seeing countless nuts, <laughs> they must be substantial. <laughs> but it's like, it's something that happens like at birth. Like he has a, a huge buildup of fluid in his sack. So when he goes to get his vasectomy, they're also going to drain the fluid out of there. So this was not, he was not like making like a play on words at all. No, dude's got, I thought you were, he's got a fat sack. (laughs) Cool. Just had, we were talking about big nuts. Shout out Cody. I had to shout out Cody and his his, nice sack, dude. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back to gel pens. (laughs) (laughs) Back to pens. <laughs> okay. Uh 1988, Sakura launched the Jelly Roll Pen, introducing a new aesthetic with a range of fresh, attractive ink colors. Uh there were metallic, fluorescent, and glittery ink options for the jelly roll pen. I've never really been into gel pens. I think it's very kids bop. Like with the glitter and stuff? Yeah. I hate glitter. Can't stand glitter and sparkles. Makes me so mad. I think it's just a dude, man. <laughs> That could, that, could too. Dude, that could be it, too. That could be it, too. A white guy as straight as us. Yeah. If I open up a card for some birthday or holiday and I get little glitter sparkles mm-hmm. somewhere, they never go away. Ever. I think I think you're Ever. right. Oh, that just infuriates me. Thank you for the card. Love it so much. But if you're going to have a choice, please don't buy those ones. Yeah. Or the ones that sing. It's a close second for shit. Depends. Is it a good song? Are we, are we, do I like the song? Hollaback Girl, Gwen Stefani. <laughs> it's shit staying open. I'd leave it open. <laughs> shit yeah. staying open. Hey, you guys want to head back to my place, listen to some music? Just open all your cards that you've had. Just got a hundred, yeah. just a shelf. Instead of having a record collection, it's yeah. just cards. 30 second snippets of songs yeah. from birthday cards. Yeah, you have a photo <laughs> album of the cards. It's like, what album do you want? You got all of Gwen's here. Get Michael Jackson up here. Oh, that'd be so funny, dude. That would be good. We have a new little... Because, yeah, usually the, I, there's got to be some copyright issues for, like, you can't put... Because the songs are not... Maybe songs. maybe every card that they make with Gwen Stefani's song on it, she gets, like, a dollar. Royalties, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they lose 39 cents on every card they sell. Actually, those singing cards, those are actually... Ooh, a couple expensive. bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cards are expensive. Yeah. Are you guys card? Do you write in cards? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. tying it back to pens. Are you like long writers? Or are you just like congrats on the kid? Thanks. Whatever. It depends situation. No. Yeah. yeah. If you, I mean, like if pen you pal, get, just got married, pal. maybe I'll write a little note about happiness and joy and. Yeah. My Speaking take. of that, yeah, because like every card that I would buy for Carolyn, like, it's a, it's a big day. It's a holiday. Or it's her birthday or something. Mm-hmm. And so I'd write like a a poem, a, a nice big, sometimes a poem. But I write like a big thing or like I would write on a sheet of paper, like fill up a page of paper <laughs> and write and pour my heart out to her. Yeah. And then I'd slip that in there and give it to her. Yeah. And then this, is, like a, this is really like sweet. A card roofie. <laughs> right yeah. at the end, it says, my friend Cody's got big <laughs> balloons. <laughs> yeah. By the way, happy By Valentine's way. Day. You want to see him? Love cool you so fact much. I just found out. Uh, so do you write with a pen or a pencil? Pen. Marker. All point. Gel. Gel. Really? Pilot. G2. That's not a gel pen. What do you think the G stands for? Great. It is great. Is it? I don't think you're right, Liam. I don't think it's a gel pen. Pretty sure it's a ballpoint. Am I confused on my 
my gel and ballpoint well, pen. You said you could determine whether it's a ballpoint pretty quickly. It doesn't look like it has a ball on the end. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you can't tell. You suckered me into yeah. it. What Is it got? a ballpoint pen? It's as about ballpoint as you can get, baby. Pilot G2 fine point gel ink pen. Fuck. Is See? it really? Yeah. Guess I'm a gel it. guy. Pointy tip. God, I thought for years it was a ballpoint. Oh, man. Pointy tip. No, they have gel, gel rollers. Gel rollers, too. There's different lines of the G2 pen. Yeah, this is what I'm know. seeing. This is what they're telling me. Such bullshit. I can't believe it. You get five for five bucks. See, that's a pen I would buy. Yeah. That's a good deal. Uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, you used to not be able to get five for five bucks because every ballpoint pen back in 1945 was expensive. Twelve fifty for a pen. Jeez. Back then? Yeah. That's like... I'll tell you 50 what, bucks a, now. No, it's not. It's worth $180 now. Holy shit. Yeah. $180 back then to now. So how stupid is your little $100 pen sounding right now? Not that. A little silly. Hmm? No. Put your glasses up. <laughs> um, I'd still do it. May I remind you, you are under oath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to get it one day, I swear. I swear by it. Uh, so luxury pens were like status symbols. Brands like Mont Blanc and Parker are considered status symbols, often used as prestigious gifts. So maybe uh, this is like people who like do canoeing, like competitive canoeing. You know, like I'm thinking Ivy yeah. League, the Winklevoss twins. Yeah, like I think it's is it canoeing or kayaking. I'm it's rowing. Sure. I think You're talking about rowing. the dudes from rowing the social team. network, right? Rowing, yeah. 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 They're real people, too. Shouldn't be. The Winkle bosses. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant kayakers. I, <laughs> <laughs> they're they, they're people, too, but they aren't. Um, the Treaty of Versailles was signed with a Parker dual fold. That's that's pretty little kick-ass thing to say. Our pens solve world wars. Dude, I was thinking when I was doing research for this episode, I want to be a pen collector. Okay. I want to be like this pen signed, you know, whatever document. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, or this pen was used by Michael Jackson used this pen to sign his first record deal. Yeah. Yeah. Those pens got to be expensive as hell. Oh, man. Somebody's yeah. got it somewhere. But maybe just starting off, I could be the collector that's like, I have the brand of pen that he used. You like know? the exact model? Exact model, not the same exact pen. Right. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, it's a neat little idea you got going here. You I mean, park a dual fold. people collecting stamps and I, stuff. I think, yeah, I think you're moving up on like how you're getting less stupid. Yeah. Up on your like list. Yeah. That's fair. So I'm I'm respecting this one. All right. I was right. really. I got wrote stamp of approval. When, I just put in my order of pens. When now you I said pen collector, I'm not going to lie. Uh. It went really far down. <laughs> like at first up. I almost like got really pissed. And then you said like pens that did cool shit. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. But aren't, isn't collecting something just give you that rush? Don't you want to collect something? That's hair. The whole, hey, <laughs> do you? <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> You're evicted from my house. <laughs> it's not I'm not, bag of hair I'm not going too. down to the basement and seeing a wall of hair. Just How cool would that be? Yeah. Scotch taped onto the wall <laughs> <laughs> with a little piece underneath it from Oak Park. Don't know who it was. Don't know where it came from. Jane Doe. <laughs> Oak Park. I don't know. Go to. <laughs> Between the seats of the movie theater. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, just brings rubber gloves and a little tweezers everywhere it goes yeah. with them. Drops it into the little. Longfellow line School line Playground. Finally. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a keeper. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's salty. <laughs> That's going on the wall. <laughs> uh, but don't you want to collect something? You know, mm. I'd I'd have to have something that would pick away my interest to collect. I just don't right. know what that would be for me. Guns. Maybe it's a very expensive collection, though. I don't yeah. know if that's more of a collection. Like, would you classify it as a collection? Like the same way people collect old cars. I think once you start buying like old guns. Like, you know, like an M1 Grand or like a Thompson. You yeah. know what I mean? Then you could yeah. call it a collection. But right now, I think you're just, you know. Just having a lot of guns. No, right. they would yeah. have to have some sort of 
value, some meaning to it. Besides just being a gun. What's a dumb yeah. little stupid thing you would want to connect or collect? Connect? Collect. A dumb stupid thing I would want to collect? I like pens. I yeah, Pens, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me, I guess. I'd have to... Yeah, but what's something other than pens? Baseball memorabilia, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's pretty mainstream, though. I guess, like... I'd uh, say it has to be one item. So you could go, like, baseballs. So, you know, every year when you well, buy... Foul your, balls from Target Field only. I guess. From uh, every seat. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Count this one here. Yeah. Uh, so every year, the when you buy a waterfowl stamp for the state of North Dakota... Then you get a literal waterfowl stamp in the mail that says you're legally allowed to hunt waterfowl for that season. Yeah. But each of those stamps are all hand drawn from somebody. Like yeah, some, somebody cool. somebody puts in and like there's a big competition for it. And then whoever wins gets the stamp for that year. And they're all like really unique, like really. Yeah, really yeah they're cool pretty features. So, I mean, like stamp collector, but then get more niche into the waterfowl stamps of these. Turn it into a wallpaper. Maybe I got, I got one. see. My plan right now was I have it because I just keep the stamp like on me if I ever go out hunting, but then it's done at the end of the season. And yeah. then I take it and I stick it onto my gun safe. Oh, so, so you then still I'm going to have, have I'm going to have like a border eventually over the years of like all these different waterfowl stamps going around my gun safe. So you have saved them Two. <laughs> I've started. Yeah. Which is a good start. I mean, more yeah. pens that than it's I better have. than one. More important pens than me. What would be yours? Baseballs, you said? No, that, yeah. I'm trying to think of stuff, but I'm such a person that gets like really into something really quickly. And then like a month later, I'm like, that is stupid. Yeah. But you got to do that to actually know. Like, yeah, right. you they say that things. for like, for like hobbies, like you should sell yourself and get serious about it for a month. And then like in that month frame, you're going to know like, okay, I'm not that into this. This sucks or this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I would do. Because I might go all in on pens and then get like three and I'm like, I don't give a shit about these pens. I know we talked about this before, like chef's knives, like really nice, like Japanese chef knives and like stuff like that. Yeah. Which would be like cool to have, but I wouldn't want to collect them. Like I'd want to have use out of them. Finals. Yeah. Records? Yeah, like records. Yeah. I could get into that. I do look every time. But it seems like one of those things that a lot of people collect, you know? Yeah. And I can see why. I think it's cool. There's more than just... Yeah. Looking at them. I just you wanted know? you to be more. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Car tires, dude. I don't know what you want yeah. from me. These are things I, that I think I are cool. My mind too. Car tires. It just is like a dumb idea. <laughs> just like I was going to say tires just to be an idiot. <laughs> and then the fact. It's that not, well, it's not it bad. Too. Like if you're like, oh, this is a tire for a 1940 Humvee that they had in World War Two or whatever. Right. The hell. Yeah. This thing ran over 10 feet. As long as. It, yeah. <laughs> You still see the blood. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's an interesting little niche thing. Yeah. Like, because everyone... You Car go, oh, tires that have been involved in murder. <laughs> yeah. Get niche. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like. What do you got, Nathan? Oh, get the Boston Marathon car tires. That oh, on that goodness. Vehicle. That'd be like the... Shoes? Most prized <laughs> yeah. God. No? Me. All right. Get, get the wheels from the Flight 93. Is that the one that went into the field? field? I yeah. think so. Right. What else? We got more pens? Shit. Um, not a whole lot. Uh, just a couple of facts. Ballpoint pens can write underwater and in zero gravity. Uh, longest ballpoint pen measured 18 feet. Jeez. <laughs> For what? Half an inch. What kind of paper were they writing on? What kind Trees. of football the whole tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had to be those banners they pull behind planes. <laughs> right. It's gotta be. It's it was magazine. the Iron Giant. Uh, over 2 billion Bic pens are sold each year. They do razors too, don't they? Bic? Yeah. Bic Mitchum. You ever, you know what that's from? Kevin Hart has a movie. I don't know what movie it is, but he has to give up. He has to come up with like an alias. He's on the phone and they're like, who is this? And he's like, ah, uh, and he's in the bathroom. And he sees a razor, a Bic razor. He's like, ah, uh, Bic. Bic Mitchum. And I don't know what Mitchum is, but it was another brand of something. So that always <laughs> stuck with me. Be a good alias. Oh, hey, I'm Bic Mitchum. Nice to meet you. And I'm Bitch Mickum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fisher space pen was designed to work in space. That's probably the one Nathan doesn't like. Uh, early ballpoint pens. Talk about that one. Um, <laughs> gel pens are really hard to get on forensics. So they can't really tell when something was written or dated, how long ago it was written. If it's a gel pen, that's why I use them. Don't want it to be tracked. 
Um, ballpoint oh. pen means most world's most used writing instrument. Black and blue inks are the most common. Red is traditionally used for marking corrections. Uh, cross pens have been used by U.S. presidents, including Barack Obama, who preferred the cross Townsend model. Imagine being a president and you have models you prefer. I guess like us prefer in the pilot G2, so <laughs> not that crazy. Hmm. Yeah, but like worry about something else. You're the president. Stupid. Yeah. Foreign affairs. Yeah. Where the economy's coming crashing. From. Worry about that. Who's building these pens? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is episode 81, Three Dudes Podcast. Hope you guys liked. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>